Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna go through the inferences summative review. So for this, I'm gonna give you my example for each type. Yours obviously may be a little different and that's okay. So for random sample, you survey randomly at the grocery store about favorite color. Has nothing to do with anything at the grocery store and you're serving randomly. Um, the next one is voluntary response is ask people to fill out the survey on their target receipt. Okay, systematic random is ask every fifth person their favorite pizza topping convenient is asking my math class their favorite subject Again, yours may be different and that's fine. Okay. Car manufacturer wants to evaluate the quality of their products, so they check every 20th car. That is going to be unbiased. And that is gonna be systematic. It's every 20th car. The owner of a candy store wants to find out the fake flavored jelly beans he should add what would be a good sample for him to get this information? So for it to be, we want it to be unbiased. So we want, we could either do um, systematic or completely random. I'm gonna do random and asks 20 people in the store randomly. Again, it could be systematic. Every fourth person that walks in, that would be fine too. Landon found out that 12 out of 25 people in his school prefer chocolate ice cream. How many people would he predict like chocolate ice cream if there's 318? Round to the nearest whole number. So 12 out of 25 equals X over 318. Cross multiply, divide. So 12 times 318 divided by 25 gets you 152, nearest whole number, so 153 students. 25% of Miss Smith's class had pizza for lunch today. If there's 451 students in sixth grade, how many would you predict had pizza for lunch today? Round to the nearest whole number. So 27 out of 100 equals X over 451. 451 times 27 divided by 100. Percent's always out of 100. Nearest whole number, 122 students. Okay, so remember, this is based on that chart that you need to have memorized. Okay. So when both are symmetrical, we're gonna use the mean and the mad. If neither are symmetrical, we're gonna use the median and the IQR, interquartile range. Same if only one is symmetrical, median and IQR. So these are both symmetrical, okay? So we should use the mean and the mad but they're box plots, 
Okay, so we don't know the mean and the mad, so we still need to use median and IQR. Okay, so we need to find the mean for group A. So we are going to add 79, 92, 100, 87 plus 92 gets me 450 divided by 5 gets me a mean of 90. So let's see how far away each number is from 90. So 90 minus 79. So 11, 2, 10, 3, and 2. So we're going to add them up and divide by 5. So 11 plus 2 plus 10 plus 3 plus 2 divided by 5 is 5.6 for group A. Let's do group B. 85 plus 89 plus 91 plus 72 plus 98. 435 divided by 5 gets me 87. Okay, so let's see how far it is away. Okay, so it's 2, 2, 4, 7 plus 72, or minus 72, 15, 98 minus 87, 11, 4 plus 4 plus 15 plus 11, divided by 5. Gives me 6.8. Okay, I thought I needed another slide, but I'm good. Okay, so remember, when the difference of the means divided by the mad is zero, then it overlaps completely. If it is one, it is a lot. If it's five, it's a little. And remember, the only way that it, we know that it's not at all is if we can actually see the data set. So difference in the means divided by the mad. So 100 minus 50 gets me 50 divided by that gives me 10. So again, it's going to be pretty spread out, but it's still a little overlapping <coughs> because we don't know what the data set is. Okay, positive correlation on a scatter plot is going to be going up. Negative correlation is going to be going in a general downward. And then no correlation is going to be kind of all over the place. Okay, so now these two moods of two different groups, are they symmetrical? No. So we are going to use the median and the mass. IQR. Thanks.